Okay, guys, now that we've uh, introduced the concept of force and taking a look at some examples of everyday forces, I want to introduce um, something called a free body diagram, where we'll use these everyday forces. So let's imagine, so let's call a free body diagram. Now, we could, we could imagine a situation, kind of a common everyday scenario. Let's Let's imagine it's a um, case where we've got a person just standing on the ground. So here's the ground right here. Maybe we'll make it black. Here's the ground right here. And we've got a person. Here's this person just standing on the ground, just hanging out. Okay. There's this person. Um, and the person's not moving, just standing there, hanging out. Uh, we might try to imagine, okay, what are the forces that are acting on this person as uh, he just stands there? And to do that, what we might do is we might draw a dot, and we're going to say that this dot right here represents the object in question. So this dot is representing, in this case, this dot represents the person. Um, it, it doesn't matter what the object is, we just represent the object in question as a dot. And now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the forces that are acting on the person. Um, and the first thing we might recognize is that, is that there's a force of gravity. Gravity is pulling the person downward. So to represent that, I'm going to draw an arrow downward. That's because the force of gravity acts downward. I always draw the arrow starting on the dot, on the object, and going in the direction of the force. So in this case, I start the arrow on the dot and go down. And now I'm going to label that arrow, since it's gravity, I'm going to label it MG. You'll remember that that's the abbreviation that we use for gravity, MG. And then I ask myself, okay, well, is gravity the only force? And of course it isn't. You can see there's a ground here, right? And the ground is going to push up on the person. And so I'm going to draw another arrow here, starting on the dot and going upward. So here's this force going upward. And how, what am I going to label that? You may remember in the last video we talked about how there are forces from surfaces, perpendicular to surfaces, called the normal force. So I'm just going to abbreviate that F sub N. That's F sub N for the normal force. And in this case, um, turns out that these two forces are equal. And you don't really have to do this, but I'm just going to go ahead and make some little tick marks here to indicate that I know that those two forces are equal. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to explain later on why I know those two forces are equal. It might be obvious to you that they're equal, but I'm going to come back to that in just a little bit. Um, maybe I'll... Hold on. I'm just trying to free up some space here and erase a little bit there. So this is a case where since the forces are equal, you may remember um, we talked about the net force. So in this case, the net force, the total force, the resultant when you add up all of the force vectors is zero. This is a case of net force zero. Um, since these two forces are equal and opposite, they're going to cancel. There's some different words that are used for the, the situation where the net force is zero. Sometimes what we'll say is that the forces are balanced. Balanced forces. Or sometimes what we'll do is we'll say that this is a situation, a fancier word for this is, this is a situation of equilibrium. In physics, the word equilibrium just means that the forces are balanced or as we say here, the net force is zero. So these are just some common everyday, or I should say common in physics, common everyday phrases that indicate um, that the net force is zero. So if you hear me say the forces are balanced or you hear me say the word equilibrium, that's all just meaning this idea that the net force, the total force is zero because in this case we had two forces that were canceling. Um, so what we're about to really move into right now, that's uh, an introduction to what we're going to talk about or spend the next bit of time talking about, which is the balanced force model. So maybe I'll just make a note of that. The balanced force model. This is a, so I'll abbreviate this BFM, balanced force model. This is a model where you're thinking about situations can, where the um, the condition is that all of the forces on the object, in other words, the net force is zero, all the forces on the object cancel out. Um, so maybe just um, 
while we're talking about this, it might be worth thinking about another uh, situation that you could imagine. Let's say now, let's go back to a, a situation like this. Say we've got a, um, a store, and uh, on that store, so here's maybe the side of the building, and we want to hang a sign. So here's the side of the building right here, and we put out a post here, and then we have this sign. Let's say here's the sign. It says open. And we want to hang that sign by two ropes. We have one rope that goes up here and another rope that goes up here that attaches onto this pole. So here's the pole that is holding up our sign. So we've got these two ropes. And now this is a case where, uh, again, and I haven't explained exactly to you yet how it is that I know that this is true, although it might be obvious. This is another case where all of the forces on that sign are going to are going to balance out. Now, in other words, this is going to be a case of the balanced. Don't oh, hang on one second. This is going to be a case of the balanced force model. The net force on that sign is going to be zero. Um, and I'll get in a, in a little bit. I'll get to how I know that. But to 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 go through the process of how would we draw a free body diagram for the sign again? I'm going to draw a dot. That dot now represents the sign. And I'm going to say, okay, well, what are the forces? I know I've got gravity acting straight down. So what are the upward forces? Well, I know that this, this string right here and this string right here are going to exert forces upward. And since it's a rope or a string in this case, these are tension forces. So I'm going to draw two arrows. I'm going to draw one arrow going this way. Hang on. Just make that. Maybe something like this, and I'll abbreviate that F sub T for the force of tension. And I'm going to make another arrow at around an equal angle going in this direction, F sub T like so. And I'd like to imagine again that these angles right here, these two angles are equal. So this is a case where all of the forces balance. But it's a little bit more complicated than the previous case because this is a two-dimensional case. There are two dimensions here, right? We have... We have an up direction, which I could call the y direction, and we have a side to side direction, which I might call the x direction. And so the situation here is that two things have to be true. It has to be true both that f net in the y direction is zero, and it has to be true that f net in the x direction has to be zero. And I just want to talk through how that is the case, how, how that works. And to do that, what I'm, going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the two tension forces into components like so. So this is the x component and the y component. And again, the, I've got the x component and I've got the y component like here. And maybe just for notation's sake, I'll call this, this one right here, I'll call F1 and I'll call, or F, well, I'll do FT1 and FT2 just to indicate which one is which. And... So when I take a look at this situation, in order for the, let's start, maybe we can start with the F net Y is zero. In order for F net Y to be zero, that means that this arrow here, or this component and this component together have to equal MG. In other words, what I can say is that F T1 in the Y direction plus F T2 in the Y direction have to equal MG. I hope that's clear. That's, a, that's what I'm doing is I'm taking this one and this one, adding them together. The two up arrows have to equal mg. And that is so that all of the forces in the y direction and the vertical direction cancel out. Similarly, the forces in the x direction and the horizontal direction, they have to cancel too. So that just means that this one and this one have to be equal. In other words, f t one x has to equal f t two sorry, FT2X, these two forces, this one here and this one here, those two have to be equal. So that's just a slightly, um, slightly more complicated case. All right, now I wanna to get to, the, to this idea of how is it that I know that the forces are balanced? So how do we know when we're in the balanced force model? Um, so maybe I'll just say balanced force model, question mark, question mark, how do we know? Um, and I think the reason that you probably thought it was intuitive in these two cases that the forces would cancel, I bet some of you thought, oh, well, that's obvious. It's because they aren't moving, 
right? In this case, we have the man standing there. The man isn't moving. The man is, is what we would say in physics, sorry. We would say that this is a case where the man is static. Static, not moving. And similarly, the sign here, it was also static. And so maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, cases where the object isn't moving, that means that it's balanced force model. And that wouldn't exactly be right. And, the, and so to, to understand how do I know this, I want to introduce the first of three laws um, named after their originator, um, which is a guy named Isaac Newton. So Newton's, this is going to be Newton's first law. We're going to have three laws. So this is Newton's first law. This is a really, really important concept in physics. It may or may not be obvious to you. Um, I, I personally think it's something that's not particularly intuitive. So Newton's first law, which I usually abbreviate N1L, um, is sometimes called the law of inertia. So sometimes you'll hear the law, this called the law of inertia. And inertia, this is a word in physics that just means, this word right here, it just means roughly lazy. It means not kind of a tendency to want to keep doing what you're doing. So I bet many of you have heard Newton's first law stated in this really roundabout way. I'm not going to bother to write it out, but I'll say it. You may have heard something like, um, uh, an object in motion will remain in motion in a straight line at constant speed unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Um, you may have you may have heard something like that. Or uh, the other piece of it is something like an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Um, I'm not going to state that. I'm not going to write that whole thing out because we can say it. I think now that we know we've got some physics terminology, we can um, uh, state that more succinctly. What we can say is that if the, the net force is zero, then the acceleration is zero. Okay, that's that's the sum of that, that that's Newton's first law stated succinctly. Um, if the net force is zero, then the acceleration will be zero. Period. End of story. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that if the velocity is constant, f net is zero when the velocity is constant. In other words, in these two cases, the case of the person standing here, the velocity was constant, a is zero, but it just so happens that the, that the velocity is a constant zero velocity. Similarly, this case, it was a case of a being zero so and v was zero. So both of these were net force zero cases. What I want to be clear about is that it's entirely possible to have a balanced force situation when the velocity is not zero. So for instance, maybe I've got a situation like this. Maybe I've got a, um, I've got the road here. Here's the road, something like this. And I've got a, a car driving on the roadway. Here's, here's my car here. And the car is moving at constant velocity. So we're told that the velocity is constant, let's say. So constant velocity. And maybe just it's not really clear on the picture, but maybe we'll have like a um, try to make this uh, obvious. Here's here's the muffler. OK, and he, here, here I am. So in other words, just to make it clear, the velocity, the direction of the velocity is that way. So I'm moving to the right. Um, so if I wanted to draw a free body diagram for this case, some people, if they hadn't learned Newton's first law, they might have been tempted here to draw the dot and say, OK, well, I know that I've got mg down. And I know I've got the road, the normal force, Fn, pushing up. Those are equal. And since I'm driving, what somebody might say is there's got to be some forward force. Some, and what, I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this an applied force, F sub A. <clears throat> that applied force, you know, where is it coming from? It, it has to do with the interaction between the tires and the road. Um, that we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about exactly what's going on there when we talk about Newton's third law. But so, some students would stop at this point and say, all right, done. And I would say, no, not done. Um, the reason being is that if the velocity is constant, 
that means the acceleration is zero. And if the acceleration is zero, then the, the F net has to be zero as well, because that's what Newton's first law states right here. If net force is zero, then A is zero. Here, A is zero, so F net has to be zero. And so there has to be a backward force here, which is canceling out the applied force from the road. And you might ask yourself, what is that force? And you would hopefully answer that that is the force of friction. There is a friction force. There's both friction from the road on the tires, but there's also actually just air resistance, drag from the air particles, right? We could think of that as friction as well. So this is a case of balance forces as well. And that's sort of, that's the, the root of Newton's first law is this idea that forces are balanced when the acceleration is zero. All right, I think that's enough for, um, for this video. Um, and that's really all we have to say about balanced forces.